Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now. And this month we're here in southern Spain to report on the rising issue of Saharan dust hitting solar energy production. According to recent research, a big dust event can actually reduce electricity output from panels like this by up to 80%, and it's proving to be a significant challenge. La predicción del polvo debe ser una de las cosas más complicadas que hay. Well, that's our story coming up, but first, the very latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service, which shows that we've just had our 12th consecutive month of record high temperatures. May 2024 was the warmest May on record, with temperatures globally 0.6 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. To put the last 12 months into context, this graph of global temperature anomalies since 1979 shows how the planet has warmed significantly in the past decade. In May 2024, we saw extreme weather in many areas. In southern Brazil, widespread flooding displaced more than half a million people. The Delhi region of India hit 49.9 degrees Celsius, its highest temperature on record. And Finland issued a heat wave warning with highs over 27 degrees Celsius. This map of precipitation anomalies shows how May was drier than average in the east of Europe and southern Spain and Portugal, and much wetter than average from Ireland to Italy. Heavy rain led to flooding in southwestern Germany, Belgium and northern Italy. And now to our report on the impact of Saharan dust on solar energy production. Since 2020, the number of Saharan dust events in Europe has risen. Researcher Eduardo Fernandez took these photos showing the intense dust storm of March 2022 at the University of Jaén in Andalucía. Parecía un, un, digamos, un ambiente de Marte, porque se quedó todo rojo. The dust reached as far north as Denmark. In Spain, it hit solar energy hard. Las pérdidas de, de la producción fotovoltaica a nivel de, 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 en España fueron del 80%. 2022 was an extreme example, but even small amounts of dust can reduce the sunlight reaching solar cells. So here they're comparing different systems to see how they perform. And every detail counts, as Professor Florencia Almonacid explains. Estos módulos de aquí no tienen marco. Estamos evitando pues que se acumule, se acumule polvo en, en esas zonas que pueden llegar a causar grandes problemas. Dusty panels like these ones can lose 15% of their capacity. In the lab, the team is investigating different dust-resistant solar cell coatings. And they test how dust accumulates depending on whether the weather is warmer or colder, wetter or drier. They found that Saharan dust is particularly problematic. Las partículas son muy finas de, del, del polvo del Sahara, son muy finas y fue un, un tipo de polvo que era particularmente difícil de, de limpiar. Washing commercial solar plants like this is expensive, so the operators use weather data to plan their cleaning sessions depending on dust events and rainfall. Juan Fernandez heads operations at renewables company Sonidix. This forecasting uh, capabilities, this is becoming more and more, and more important for us, not only from the standpoint of managing soiling, but also from the standpoint of managing generation and what the, um, uh, what the grid and the end consumer uh, needs. Solar energy is growing rapidly in Europe, so the dust issue is becoming more acute. A severe Saharan dust event could actually bring a significant drop to the production of within the grid, and that for the grid operator could become an issue. So anticipation, forecasting, and, and uh, being able to manage this proactively is really the name of the game. The recent rise in Saharan dust events could be connected to changes in the atmosphere. So is there a link to climate change? For dust expert Eduardo Fernandez, there's a chance. Cada vez estamos registrando más eventos del Sahara, cada vez penetran más al norte de Europa y la sospecha es que sí se debe al calentamiento global. Well, that's all we have time for, but please head over to euronews.com slash climate now to learn more about how our planet is changing. And I'll see you soon. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.